All right, welcome to another S&P 500 analysis. This is the midweek edition. Today is August 11, 2021. In this uh, week's uh, midweek edition, I'm going to do a uh, little bit different than, uh, than what I normally do. Still going to uh, talk about the uh, market and the internals, but I'm also going to show you some of the uh, live chart that I'm looking at throughout the session and then kind of give you uh, uh, some of my thoughts uh, what I'm looking at and uh, uh, the reason why I'm looking at what I'm uh, uh, looking at. So just kind of give you some of my thought here. Not necessarily it's the right move or turn out to be right or not, but it just uh, kind of show the uh, the process of uh, my trading day of uh, when I'm looking at chart, uh, what I'm uh, thinking about, what I'm paying attention to. Let's get started. So let's just uh, start with this chart here. This is the S&P 500 cash index. Uh, this is a 15 minute intraday chart. You can see that I have a uh, resistance line up here on the top here. Is it connecting to some of these uh, highs? And also I have some of these lows. So I'm basically looking at this uh, little wedge or channel, if you call it. And this is the IB low, IB high, which uh, represent the uh, first hour range. And as you can see, uh, we uh, opened the gap up and drive a little bit. Then we got in responsive selling came in and took it down and actually, uh, you know, uh, filled this gap here. Now it's coming back up. And um, my thought right now is that I'm looking for this uh, IP high to get taken out. And also, I'm going to show you the uh, E-mini S&P 500 future later on. That we also had a uh, Globex all-time high last night, and uh, that tells me that we are gonna see another, most likely see another S&P 500 all-time high. And I'm basically targeting today uh, that uh, we will see a new all-time high on the S&P 500. Now let's take a look at the breadth here. Right now we're basically looking at a uh, 1.42 to one ratio on the up volume uh, in favor of the up volume to the down volume in the New York Stock Exchange. And notice the advanced decline, right? The advanced decline opened up uh, with uh, close to a thousand uh, more advancing issue than declining issue. Then immediately it came down and went negative. Then it shot up again. And you see how it uh, chopped down and uh, got down to uh, you know, about 300 or so. And right now, we're basically coming back up toward the, uh, the opening high here, right? So the advanced decline is uh, coming back. And also notice the, uh, the tick, although we did get, get some negative tick here, and there are some uh, sell programs down here, but the cumulative tick has been positive throughout this session so far. And I also got the S&P 500 here. And this is a three minute chart. So you can see that it gapped up and kind of chopped around and then it sold off and then came back in. So right now it's sitting right above the IP low. So I'm expecting it to come back up and take out the IP high uh, and, uh, and then take out the, uh, uh, put in a new all time high here. Although right now it is uh, getting an all time high, but I do expect the, uh, uh, the E mini. S&P 500 future uh, need to uh, pick out that Globex high, and that probably will push the uh, the S&P 500 uh, you know, above the uh, opening high here or today's uh, high of the day. And down here is the Nasdaq. The Nasdaq is running about 1.08 in favor of up volume on the up down volume ratio. Now the Russell 2000 uh, running a little bit positive. But strangely enough, the index is actually down. So the up-down volume uh, uh, ratio is positive 1.2, so in favor of the up volume. And you can see also uh, the NASDAQ 100 or the NASDAQ AD, the advanced decline, did not recover uh, as uh, uh, like the uh, New York Stock Exchange up here. See that it also opened gap up here near the 1,000 and came right down and, and went negative and went negative almost 1,000. In other words, started out with uh, 1,000 more of advancing issue than declining issue to 
1000 more decliner than advancer. So right now it's coming back up and still running negative about 435. So um, it's not uh, anywhere close to where it opened. Again, looking at the uh, the cumulative tick, you know, we, we have some uh, 800 minus 800 tick here. So uh, uh, a couple of uh, strong uh, uh, sell program and quite a few down at the uh, minus 500. And also known as the, uh, the cumulative tick in negative throughout the session so far. So right now it's trying to come up and getting close to the neutral area here. So uh, we'll see whether it get positive or not, but uh, definitely it's a uh, much uh, different uh, picture than the uh, New York Stock Exchange. And here I have the uh, NASDAQ 100, E-mini NASDAQ 100 futures instead of the cash index. So you can see that uh, it is uh, below the IP low and running below the, uh, uh, the uh, today's uh, rewrap. So um, also it came down and tag the uh, overnight low. Now let's take a look at the E-mini S&P 500. I have the market profile on the left and the uh, uh, a tick chart with the volume profile. So as you can see here, I marked off the uh, the Globex all-time high that was made uh, last night and it's sitting at uh, 4,443 and a quarter. And uh, we have a uh, uh, clean high here Earlier, there was a uh, poor low, and I shorted the, uh, the SPX, the S&P 500, and scalped that poor low, and then I uh, covered uh, the one when it got down here. So right now, I'm actually long the uh, SPX, playing for the, uh, the all-time high here, or playing for a uh, you know, higher high, higher than today's opening high or high of the day. Because I expect this to uh, come back up, the E mini S and P 500, the ES, come back up, take out this IB high, and come up and tag this uh, Globex all-time high here. So I'm expecting the uh, ES to go above 42 and a quarter today. Okay, you see, uh, notice on the uh, the volume profile, see that the uh, the price came down and dipped below the rewrap, and it kind of chopped around on that. So. Uh, it uh, trade inside of this uh, IB range, then it broke down and came down here to yesterday's uh, point of control, okay, the POC, right? And then we got a nice support and got a bounce here. So, so when you see uh, you know price react to these uh, technical level, kind of give you the indication the short time frame uh, is in control of this market. So we basically will monitor these uh, technical level, and because uh, the short-term uh, uh, trader will trade these technicals. So you can see the price came back in to the IB uh, low. Right now it's back in the IB range now, and also above the uh, rewrap. So we're gonna see what it get a bounce back up. And here's the uh, developing point of control, today's point of control. So we're gonna come up to this point of control and take out the. Uh, value area high and probably push this through and come up and tag this level. And that's the reason why I'm long here right now is basically playing off of this bounce and right now it's getting above this rewrap. So we're gonna see if the uh, rewrap will hold. If the uh, price hold above this rewrap, then we know the buyers are in control. Then we're essentially looking for this thing to move up. And also today is OPEX Wednesday. So you figure that there will be some uh, shenanigan that they're going to play. Now, in addition to watching the, uh, the S&P 500 and the E-mini uh, ES, I'm also uh, looking at uh, Tesla. And right now, you can see uh, Tesla is uh, trading down for the day. It's down half a percent or $3.87. The thing is, uh, I am actually have a, uh, a, a put spread on uh, Tesla. Because I'm playing it, uh, basically, I'm, I'm looking at this thing to come down at least, uh, you know, get down to this low here. Or take out yesterday's low, okay? So, uh, although, remember, I do have a uh, bull flag that uh, monitoring, and uh, that hasn't been uh, played out yet. As a matter of fact, that, that bull flag hasn't been triggered yet. yet. So, uh, so that might not uh, uh, become a real... Uh, pattern to play. So right now I'm extensively looking at Tesla to uh, come down and take out some of these low here. So 
So, uh, so I'm basically looking at that. And uh, if I uh, zoom in on this, so you can see after I zoom in, you notice that there is a uh, poor low here on Tesla for today. So that's the reason why I'm also, uh, you know, holding this uh, this uh, put vertical, basically playing off of this poor low and uh, waiting for it to uh, at least come down to this uh, seven uh, seven or one area. Basically, I'm looking at uh, six ninety five. I might not get it today, but uh, that's the uh, level. So let's go uh, take a look at the uh, the candlestick chart here. So on this uh, daily chart of Tesla, uh, this is the uh, bull flag that I'm referring to. I got some major move target here. Okay, so and uh, this is the uh, one of the uh, balance area that I'm also uh, monitoring. The uh, I posted on my Twitter stream a few days ago. We we basically have these uh, balance area, right? This one here and also this larger one so right now we're basically monitoring this bull flag to see if we'll be able to uh, break out and uh, come up and hit these major moves and if we get up to this upper edge of this balance area and that will be basically the 80 percent major move and if we get above that then we could possibly hit this 100 percent major move all right, so you can see that 100% is somewhere around 795. Right now, I'm basically looking for the possibility of another leg down, another candlestick come down, and uh, put in another test at the uh, the lower level, you know, this uh, lower trend line of this flag here. Okay, and that's basically what I'm playing at right now with that poor low on the uh, profile chart for Tesla. And here, looking at the 15-minute intraday chart of Tesla, you see uh, basically sitting right at that uh, that edge right now. And I'm looking for this thing to come down to this uh, uh, this trend line here, or possibly near this level here, 695 area, right? So uh, so that's what I'm looking at, and see what it come down. And essentially, I'm looking for it to uh, come down and do another push like this then maybe possibly break out of this flag and then move toward the uh, 795 area. Okay, we got less than five minutes before the closing bell. I'll give you a quick update. Then after the quick update and after the bell, I'll do a full recap of the S&P 500 and other major market indexes and the internals and the sentiment. But uh, right now, we're basically looking at a uh, positive close on S&P. And uh, the uh, ES did not come up to this Globex all-time high. It got close, but it did not uh, get there. As you can see, the uh, STF, the short time frame, is basically uh, trading these technical level. Right? Last time I uh, looked, uh, you know, in the uh, previous segment, we're basically uh, looking at the price over here coming up and holding the uh, rewrap. And you see that the price bounced off couple of time off the uh, development uh, uh, value area low and, and then it came up here and tagged the value area high and then pulled back. My long position on the SPX, I basically scaled out as it approached the uh, value area high because I knew that the STF was in control and I know they are going to be playing around with these level. So when I uh, saw that uh, it wasn't going to go to, seems to be encountering some resistance and I closed my uh, position completely. Today uh, was one of those times that uh, I was, uh, you know, my guess was uh, pretty uh, pretty much online. Although I was guessing for it to come up and tag this uh, all-time high, the Globex all-time high. Maybe it still would do that in the last couple minutes. But, uh, you know, anything is possible. But maybe the market decide to uh, put that off in uh, sometime in the future, maybe in the Maybe in uh, next day or Friday, who knows, right? But for now, basically, you see, it's coming up on this uh, value area high now. I'm not sure it's going to break it. If it break it, it's going to come up and probably uh, we'll see some selling at the IP high also. So there's a lot of things that need to uh, happen before it get up to the uh, all-time high. And here, just quickly, uh, take a quick look at the S&P 500, the cash index. So you can see it's coming up. Uh, but it hasn't got up to the IP high, so we'll see. Right now, it's sitting at the 44, 47.47. So maybe they are trying to pin the uh, 
SPY, the spider at uh, 442 and a half. So uh, maybe they are holding that back right now. So right now the spy is sitting at 443.68. So there's the bell. So uh, by the way, uh, if you are new to this channel and uh, you have not subscribed to this channel, click on the subscribe and uh, and also the notification icon. So that way you won't miss any future video from me. It really also helped me uh, grow this channel. So really appreciate your uh, support. Now uh, let's go and uh, do a recap on the uh, market and uh, and see where it might go in the uh, next couple of days. So stick around. Now before I go and do the recap on the market, let me just give a quick update on the uh, Tesla trade that I talked about earlier. Uh, remember I was uh, saying that I have a uh, put vertical on Tesla, um, you know, and I'm basically playing it for it to uh, pull back near the uh, 695 area before it uh, makes a uh, make a push you know to uh, break this uh, this uh, bull flag here and uh, work its way up to possibly you know up in the uh, 795 area and the reason that I was looking for Tesla to pull back essentially this poor low here that is forming uh, today and I'm basically looking for this thing to come down and tag this poor low and possibly take out this low here and pull back to the 695 level and i was uh, looking for the possibility of coming down and take out this poor low today but apparently uh, that's not the plan the market didn't plan to do that today so maybe in the next uh, coming day um, still looking for this poor low to get taken out and looking for that pullback uh, toward the uh, lower bottom of that flag and maybe get a bounce off of that and uh, get a push to break the uh, bull flag and have that bull flag uh, get triggered then we could see those major moves that we projected up and watch those level on the long side but right now I'm basically short on Tesla on a uh, put vertical now let's first take a look at these internals on uh, on this chart here these multiple chart here I got the S&P 500 the New York Stock Exchange essentially the up down volume ratio finished off at 1.87 in favor of up volume you see uh, earlier in the first couple of hours was kind of chopped around between positive and negative and then uh, after uh, in the noon hour New York time it just pushed up and uh, constantly building more on the upside and also the advanced decline remember I was uh, watching for it to uh, take out this high here this opening high on the uh, advanced decline and we see that it actually uh, ended the session somewhere around uh, uh, 1,010 more of answer than the final and also the cumulative take uh, continue to build up and stay at the positive and this is the cash index of the S&P so we'll take a look at it in a little bit more detail later on and this is the uh, Nasdaq uh, up down volume ratio it too also uh, chop around between positive and negative during the uh, first couple hours until in the uh, noon hour then it push up and uh, uh, into the positive territory and remain positive in favor of volume. Then, uh, and on the uh, advanced decline, uh, as you can see, it uh, stayed negative. And uh, in the earlier segment of the video, it was still negative. And as you can see, it came up and turned positive. So uh, it turned out that the advancer uh, outnumbered the decliner at the end of the session by 145. And also the cumulative take turn positive as well remember earlier we we're looking at this cumulative tick it was sitting right near the uh, uh, near the neutral area and actually uh, it turned positive so it closed positive on day and there has been uh, quite a number of buy program up here in the afternoon uh, you know those that is up at uh, positive 500 or higher so looking at this uh, daily chart of the S&P 500 and the uh, sentiment uh, we see the S&P 500 did close with a new all-time closing high once again although the e-mini S&P 500 still have an all-time closing I mean an all-time global high that need to take out that imply there's a good possibility we will see another high from the uh, S&P 500 cash index so the S&P 500 closed with a gain of uh, 10.95 points or 0.25 percent the VIX uh, closed at 16.06 so the uh, market participants still uh, relatively uh, complacent and the put call ratio is at 0.53 so 
So it's still a little bit worse on. So here's the uh, closing number on the up-down volume ratio of 1.94 in favor of the up volume and the advanced decline, the advanced number outnumbered the decline by a margin of 1,121. And the new 52-week high outnumbered the new 52-week low by uh, 144. There were uh, 181 uh, new 52-week high versus uh, 37 new 52-week low. Now for the cumulative AD line for the New York Stock Exchange, it is coming up. So, but there is still a slight negative divergence between the uh, uh, the AD line and the S and P 500 because the uh, S and P 500 closed at a new high, while the uh, advanced decline, cumulative advanced decline line, is still below the uh, pivot high or the uh, the high out here. Looking at the NASDAQ 100, the NASDAQ 100 closed down 25 point, a little bit over 25 point, a point one seven percent. But the up down volume ratio was positive at 1.22, and there were uh, 295 more advancing issue than declining issue. So we're seeing a positive divergence on the uh, NASDAQ market, and also the uh, new 52 week high outnumbered the new 52 week low by a margin of 29. There were 141 new 52-week high and 112 new 52-week low. And for the NASDAQ cumulative AD line, we are still looking at this divergence here, this negative divergence. So we need to uh, get that resolved. Although we are seeing a little bit of a positive divergence right, today on a daily basis right now, but we still need to get this uh, divergence uh, resolved. So far as the uh, internal is concerned, uh, no uh, deterioration is basically pretty much uh, status quo. And the market participants are still uh, relatively complacent and they all continue to put on risk. Now let's go and take a look at the price action of the S&P 500 and the other major market indexes. Okay, looking at this daily chart here of the S&P 500, as you can see, we're looking at this uh, uh, breakout from this balance area and we essentially did a uh, 1x uh, range uh, major move to project a target of somewhere around 4487 then we also have this Fibonacci extension this 200 percent extension at 4452.91 so right now it's uh, getting near that 200 uh, percent extension so we're going to keep an eye on it to see what it uh get above this uh, level in the next uh, day or two. Remember, we have that Globex high that the E-mini has to take out. And when that is getting tagged during the regular hour, then the S&P 500 will most likely come up and tag this 4452.91. Now, if it's continued to run up, then essentially the, the uh, potential target here is the uh, 4487. And it could even get higher than that, you know, get above this 4,500 and come up to this trend line here. And on the downside, if it decides to pull back, then if it get back into this value area, then we have the uh, balance area rule in play. And that will mean it will retrace back to the other end of this uh, balance area. And that will bring it back down to somewhere around this uh, 4,378. This 1618 extension here. All right, so, so those are the uh, near term targets or level to keep an eye on. This one here, 1618, 4378, and the 200% uh, 4452, and then the uh, 4487. And looking at the NASDAQ 100, although the, uh, the tech is getting kind of weak uh, recently, so I wouldn't be surprised to see it pull back. And uh, test these level here, you know, the uh, 141 at 14,850, or even come down to this trend line, basically in confluence with this 127 at 14,584. So, those are a couple of the levels to keep an eye on on a pullback from the NASDAQ 100. But if it decide to uh, reverse itself and continue to push up, then we'd be uh, looking at this 1618 at 15,233 and uh, possibly push up to this uh, trend line here, and that will be over 15,500. Now for the Russell 2000, remember this uh, balance area that we're looking at 
right now and also this trend line, we're saying that it needs to get above this 2297, then get outside, break up above this balance area, then we have a shot at the all time high. But if it's uh, unable to get up to this uh, 2297, then we essentially are looking for the possibility of reverse itself back down and retest this lower end of this balance area. And if it's unable to hold it, then we'd be uh, looking at 2,075 for the next potential support level. So the uh, level on the upside to keep an eye on continue to be this uh, 2,297. And then on the downside is essentially down here at 20. 125 2130 area here you know these uh these low and for the Dow Jones transportation it appeared that it's holding this uh 14,242 support and it is coming up near the uh, 15,000 level so we're going to keep an eye on to see what it be able to get back above the uh, 15,000 level remember that was one of the uh, level that we are watching and then see what it also uh, get back up above this uh support turn resistant somewhere around 15,400 area. Okay, so those are the upside level to keep an eye on. And then downside, if we come back down, once again, we'd be watching this 14,242. And if that doesn't hold, then we'd be looking at 13,656. And the Dow Jones Industrial continue to put in a new all-time high and close at another new all-time closing high. It has broken out from this uh, balance area and the uh, range uh, measure move put it at 36,438. So that's basically the target that we are watching on the upside. And if it pulls back in, dip below this 31,000, I mean 35,150 and back inside of this balance area, then we're essentially looking for a possible retracement back down to this uh, lower end of this balance area. And that would be somewhere around the uh, 33,700 area. And looking at the 10 year yield, it uh, seems to be uh, inching up toward this uh, 14 or the uh, 1.4 level, although uh, it uh, kind of back off a little bit today. But I think in the uh, near term, we probably uh, could see this uh, 14 level get tested. And the US dollar is holding steady above this 93 level. So sitting at 93.165. So basically keep an eye on it to see where it come up to this 93 and a half or so and toward this uh, 94, this upper uh, level of this zone here. Still waiting for the Fed head to come out and start talking the dollar down. So with a steady dollar today, uh, oil did not do too much. It's basically uh, held its ground and closed at uh, 68.14. So basically to see, uh, you know, if the dollar uh, weakening, then we will see this uh, oil continue to come back up. But if the uh, dollar continue to uh, gain strength, then we could see uh, this lower level. It's low somewhere around the 65 get retested. And looking at silver, after silver came below this 22.72 on Monday, it bounced off. Right now, it seems to be... Uh, holding above this uh, 2330, 2350. I think it's still kind of too early to uh, try to uh, uh, look for a buy on silver. Might be a possibility it could come down and retest this 2272 level before it uh, make a decision of coming back up toward the uh, 2471 or break down and get below this 2272. And same thing for gold. Remember, we're looking for this 1700 level. Came down and dipped below it on Monday. It came right back. So right now, it's hovering around this 1730s. So we'll see. Uh, will it be able to uh, hold the 1700? So I'm looking for another uh, test uh, near this 1700 level and then see what it put in a uh, little bit of a double bottom before it start looking for a long possibility or will it continue to break down and come down toward the next zone, which is down at the 1546 area. Now let's take a look at the ETF for the uh, S&P 500, the SPY. So you can see that it uh, put in a uh, all-time high today, but did not close with a all-time high. It did close with an all-time closing high, though. I think uh, we're going to see another uh, new high here 
if the uh, e-mini S&P 500 take out that Globex uh, all-time high. So just uh, right now, it's uh, have uh, broken out of this composite value area and it's sitting above this uh, 442.70. So uh, unless it come back into this value area, then we could see a retracement back down to this uh, 436.81, right? This development uh, composite value area low. The composite point of control is sitting at 439.65 and the value area high, like I said earlier, 442.70. And the QQQ, the ETF for the NASDAQ 100, it is pulling back. It might come down uh, to this uh, value area, low area, somewhere around 363 level. So we'll keep an eye on that. If we continue to pull back, you know, to uh, see would it be able to hold this value area low. And if it uh, push up, it probably would encounter some resistance here at 368 level. This is the uh, composite point of control. And for the IWM, the ETF for the Russell 2000, it got above the uh, composite uh, point of control and seemed like it is coming up to this uh, 224 level as the composite value area high. So we'll see, would it be able to get above that and work toward this uh, 227 level into this zone here and uh, basically testing this uh, pivot high here. But if uh, it pulls below, the composite point of control, then we could see it uh, possibly uh, work back down to this uh, value area low at 215 and possibly down here at the edge of this balance area of 214.45. Now let's take a look at the heat map for the S&P 500. As you can see, the, uh, the tech is uh, relatively weak today. Right? You see all the tech here including the semiconductor, although, you know, AMD, a couple of the isolated semiconductor uh, company uh, show a little strain. But overall, the tech in the semiconductor is pretty weak today. The uh, strength lies in the uh, financial and also the uh, industrial. You can see a lot of green here, right? So, uh, and, uh, and also the material. So this probably due to the, uh, the rate, you know, maybe uh, the uh, tapering from, from the Fed anticipating earlier tapering than, uh, than the uh, Fed uh, uh, planned on, and also the industrial and also the material probably is due to the infrastructure bill that just got passed. And I guess the market like it and anticipating those sectors will uh, benefit from that in infrastructure uh, spending bill. And this is just a look of the NASDAQ 100 heat map. So you can see uh, Moderna found the uh, uh, cooling off a bit after a uh, you know, unbelievable run <laughs> since it uh, got uh, put into the S&P 500. And Zoom is also uh, uh, pulled back a bit. So let's take a look at this uh, down 3.75% on Zoom and 15% uh, on Moderna. So all in all, the market is still holding steady. I think the market has still got a little bit more upside, although they, it is overstretched. But there's not much we could do about it until it decides to pull back. So just be cautious and manage your risk. Let me know in the comment section below how you like the, uh, the live material that I recorded at the beginning of this video. Do you like them uh, or uh, it's useless or pointless? So just let me know so I know uh, what sort of content to uh, uh, put in on some of my video and what to uh, leave out. And be sure to uh, smash that thumbs up to help me promote and share this video. Thank you for watching and stay safe.